Hello there, seventh graders. This is Mr. Kashi speaking. As you can see, I am uh, not in today, but uh, we'll be going through the notes together here on the video. <clears throat> Our schedule for today is uh, number one: should uh, attendance should be taken already if it hasn't been. Uh, two: um, we'll be taking notes on gr graphing linear equations. So yesterday we were plotting points. Today we're graphing actual lines, and uh, there should be plenty of work time today on the homework assignment, which is a worksheet 10 to practice or 10 to reteaching whichever one you choose alright so I do have a limited amount of time so let's get started on the notes we're working on 10 to graphing linear equations Okay, put today's date in the upper right hand corner. Uh, if you do get stuck on your homework, you should refer to page 491. That should uh, give you some, some other examples. The same material, and this is 7th grade math with Mr. C. Okay split up your notes here. Once again, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video. Key points down the left side, and we have our notes right down the middle. Hopefully you've gotten into a pattern where this is already on your paper by the time the bell rings. would be great. <clears throat> so, our first thing we would we want to cover is parts of an equation. Now, I'm actually going to go ahead a little bit and show you some um, a lot of the parts that we haven't gotten to yet or isn't even covered in this section but you're going to need to know um, either later on this year or next year. Okay, So our basic form is y equals mx plus b. Those are all letters and each one of those letters represents something different. Okay, So obviously the y is going to represent the y coordinate or what we would call the output. Okay? So the y is the y coordinate obviously. Okay? Uh now the m is called something that we won't get to later, but it's called um it's called the slope. We'll hopefully get to that by the end of the year and you know later on in this chapter, but if we don't um we just want to get that started. And Obviously, we have the x coordinate here. If the y coordinate's the output, the x coordinate must be the input. And then finally, with b, this is going to be what we call our y intercept. Okay? Y intercept, which y intercept means um, where our line is going to cross the y axis. Okay, x coordinate input, slope is m, y is obviously the y coordinate. Once you're done with that, I want you to just draw a line across the paper onto our next key point. If you need to stop the video, go right ahead. Just to catch up on the notes. Notes. Finding solutions or making a chart. One of those one they're pretty much the same thing. So finding solutions, making a chart is one of the ways to find a solution. It's the one that we're going to focus on during this chapter. So the best way to do this is just to show you an example. Okay, I don't have um I'm, our basic outline is up um with the y equals mx plus b. We're going to be using that here to find three solutions to uh, y equals x plus 5. Okay, So we're going to use that general form up there to find three solutions for y equals x plus 5. Now we have to do, we have to make a chart. Okay. 
So first we're just going to put x. And then our next column here is going to be x plus 5. And then we're going to find out what our y is. And then we're going to have a solution. Okay, so that's kind of our header of our chart there. And this is the confusing part for a lot of students. They always ask, well, where did you get those x's? Well, when we are trying to find three solutions, they leave that up to us. We can do any three solutions that we want. Um, I, my suggestion is to keep them low so that you don't have to gra have very large graphs when we get to graphing them here on the next slide. But they're up to you. You can choose whichever one that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose um, three consecutive numbers, two, three, and four. Okay? So I just chose two, three, and four at random. Then we're going to plug them into our equation here. So two and then x plus five, that would be two plus five. 2 plus 5 is 7, and now we have come up with an ordered pair solution. Our solution would be 2, comma 7. Okay. Same thing for 3. That would be 3 plus 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, and then our ordered solution would be 3, 8. And finally, plugging in our last x value, 4 plus 5, that would give us uh, 9. And then we would have the ordered pair 4, 9. Okay, these are our three solutions that we came up with. And once again, 2, 3, and 4, those are random. I could pick whichever x values that I wanted. They just wanted 3, and so I gave them 3. It usually helps out um, to see them when they're in the same increments. Obviously, we're just increasing by 1 here. Um, usually you would use something uh, probably like negative 1, 0, and 1 uh, just to see where the trend of our line is going. Okay. Now what we have to do, it <coughs> this will tie into our next key point. Um, our next key point is going to be graphing a linear equation. Okay? So, as you can see, 2, 7, 3, 8, 4, 9, these are all positive. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to just um, pretty much use the first quadrant. Okay, so I'm going to draw my y-axis there. I'm going to draw my x-axis here. So my first quadrant is the biggest quadrant there. And my x, my y, my largest value is 9, so i got to make sure that I have at least 9 notches on here. Okay. And now our first ordered pair was 2, 7. So I'm going to go over 2 and then up 7. Two seven. Okay. Then our next ordered pair was actually three eight. So now you could count one two three over and then eight up, but I know that it's going to increase by one over and one up. So right there, that's going to be three eight. And then finally the last one, four nine. It's going to be over one and up one again. That's going to be 4, 9. And then what you do, as soon as you have three points in a row, you will um, create your graph. Okay? And your graph should be, mine's almost a little bit off, but I'm going to try and draw it as straight as I can. Okay? Draw it as straight as I can. That would be the equation for, or that would be the graph for the equation y equals x plus 
Okay, so that's how we would um, that's how we would graph the equation that we had up there. Now we used the chart to find our solutions, and then we plotted those solutions on the coordinate grid, making sure that our our first quadrant um, was the biggest one, because that's really the only one where our points are in this case. All right, I just have one more example of material that I want to go through, and then the rest of the time will be yours to work. Our next key point is going to be using a word that I don't usually use in class, but eesh, testing solutions. Testing solutions. This is going to be an example of testing a solution. So what's going to happen is they will give you um, they'll give you an equation and they'll give you a ordered pair, and they're going to find they they want you to find out if that ordered pair is a solution of that equation. So you'll get something like is 7 12 a solution to y equals 2x plus 1. Okay? And basically what that answer what that question is is asking is is the point 7 12 where the x coordinate is 7, the y coordinate is 12, is that point on the line 2x plus 1? And to find whether it is a solution or not is actually rather simple. So what you do is uh, we're going to leave y alone and we're going to plug in 7 for the x. Okay, so we have 2 times 7 plus 1. Okay, 2 times 7 plus 1. So if you simplify this down, this should be uh, y equals 14 plus 1, y equals 15, okay? y equals 15 is not 12, okay? So since those two do not match up, what your answer to the question would be would be not a solution, okay? Because it asked, is that a solution? We say no, it is not, because those two y's did not match up after we put our input of 7 into that equation. Okay? So here's just three examples that I that I went to. You can um, you know, rewind to whatever part that you want to uh go over again. Uh three examples. This testing solution example gets a little bit tricky. Um I'll I'll be answering any questions uh, about that when I'm in uh when I'm in next. That can get um a little bit complicated with uh, a little bit more elaborate equations. So this one's a pretty simple one, but once we start dividing and things like that, it gets a little tricky. So I will um, have the rest of the, of the hour is yours to work on either the practice or reteaching worksheet. I will uh, I'll take as many questions as I can the next time I'm in, and I hope you have a good rest of the day and keep your stick on the ice.